I, 27 female, grew up being pretty close to my cousin, also 27 female. Then in high school, she got really into the party sugar thing and ended up dropping out her senior year. She eventually had my nephew, Evan. I babysat a lot for her. I was attending college locally, so I was around to help out. Long story short, the stuff I saw ended up with me calling CPS. They determined it wasn't bad enough to remove Evan, but did give her some parenting plan. Not sure what, as she cut off everyone in the family at this point. Fast forward to now. I moved away for grad school, then came back to my hometown. I haven't heard from my cousin for eight years, until recently, when she contacted me through an older email account. She said that CPS had removed Evan and his younger siblings, Connor and Gracie, three years ago. I wasn't even aware she'd had other kids. They'd been with the same foster family all this time. Now CPS was taking away her rights for not working her plan, and she had given my name to them as a relative who would adopt them. She begged me to take them, since I was the only family member who even had a possibility to. Parents have health issues, other cousins are too young in college, etc. I agreed to meet with the kids and their foster parents in a park. It turns out the foster parents also have my cousin's youngest child, baby Anna, which my cousin never mentioned. I guess she was born later in the case. She's not on the same timeline, and my cousin isn't losing her rights to Anna yet. All the kids love their foster family. The family had two older kids, I'd guess older teens, and I could see the bond between all of them. So I decided not to try and take the kids, but the foster parents are allowing me to stay involved in their life as an aunt figure. Evan still remembers me vaguely and was happy to see me, but on top of not wanting to take them from the only home most of these kids remember, I also don't want to deal with my cousin. She's still using it as not someone I want in my life right now. When I told my cousin, she was furious. She said the kids deserve to grow up with their family and I'm doing a terrible thing by not adopting them. Am I the idiot? Also, I just found out my cousin is pregnant again. The baby will be taken at birth because of the open case and the foster parents are willing to take him or her too and possibly adopt if necessary. Not the idiot. Oh, not at all. The kids sound like they're in a good place. It sounds like they are happy and healthy and perhaps may even be adopted by them in the future. Bonus, you can stay a part of their lives. Screw your cousin. You probably already know that she wants you to adopt the kids so she can manipulate things and get back in their lives and be a complete pain in your butt. And yes, I know several people who have their children adopted by family members so that the family member is the parent on record, but they take the kids anyway. So I don't blame you one bit for saying no. Your cousin is a major idiot. She needs to stop pumping out kids every two years while on sugar. She has no right to make you feel guilty for not wanting to suddenly have four or five more kids to take care of on your own with her backseat parenting from the sidelines when she's not wasted. If you did take them, she'd be at your door day and night for the next 18 years, demanding to be their mom again. Oh boy, five kids at 27 and all taken away by CPS? Even the unborn one? Your cousin needs massive help. However, the kids already have a loving family and you are not it. For most or all of them, you would be a stranger and it would be more traumatic for them for you to adopt them out of the foster family. My advice is to not let anyone else know you'll be in touch with the foster family. Your cousin would try to get dirt on the family, make trouble for them and the kids as she's already proven she's not fit to be a parent and doesn't deserve it. My sister, 28, and I, 24 male, have never been very close. We just don't have a lot in common, and she's always been very self-centered, in my opinion. Everything always has to be about her, and she's very much a one-upper. She has always been very insecure about her appearance, and has gotten some plastic surgery now that she can afford it. This past weekend, we were all at my parents' place for dinner. After dinner, people were having a few drinks and talking, my sister and dad were talking about a job that she got after she finished graduate school. She works in finance and I know she does pretty well for herself. Then my mom asked me about my job. I work in construction. I have been for almost a decade now. A company I previously worked for paid for me to go to a trade school and I was recently hired as a project manager at a different company. 
I was telling my mom about some housing and office developments we're working on when my sister interrupted me. She said she heard about one of the high-end apartments we were building and asked how it felt to be building something that I could never afford to live in. I told her I plan on building my own house eventually, but that I'm proud of every project I work on and take a lot of pride in building things that other people will enjoy. She said that she wouldn't have to worry about building anything on her own with the money she's making now. She can just buy whatever she wants. I told her that's nice, but money can't buy everything and I enjoy my work. She said she doesn't have to work nearly as hard as me and makes at least four times what I do. I told her I would rather work with my hands than sell my soul to the highest bidder like her. She told me she would let me know if she has any friends that need guest houses or pools built. At this point, I had enough, and I will admit I got petty. I told her she could spend her money on nice clothes, fancy cars, fake tits and a new nose, but inside she's always going to be the ugly little girl she's always been, and no amount of money can change that. She glared at me and said, screw you, slammed her hands on a table, and stormed out of the room in tears. Both my parents asked me what the heck was wrong with me and why I would say that. I innocently told them that I thought we were just giving each other a little crap and it wasn't my fault if she couldn't take what she was trying to dish out. My dad said I knew exactly what I was doing and I did it on purpose and I owe her an apology. So I told him if she wanted an apology, she could buy one from someone else and I got up and left. My mom has been calling me telling me I need to apologize to my sister and I told her I will when she does first. My mom said I need to be the bigger person here because I took a low blow on purpose when my sister was just lightly teasing. So I am refusing to apologize and don't care if I hurt my sister's feelings. As far as I'm concerned, she can afford a therapist for that. Not the idiot. You stuck up for yourself and responded in kind after she got petty first. Unfortunately, your parents sound like they've enabled her. It might be hard to hear, but I think distancing yourself from that relationship would do wonders for your mental health. And your sister knew exactly what she was doing and was doing it on purpose. Everyone's the idiot here. Her comments were cruel and it seems she didn't know when to give up, but you were worse. You were insulting and deliberately brought up her insecurities. In the future, ignore her or walk out on the conversation before losing your temper. I also tend to warn people like this. If they keep going, I will tell them something they don't want to hear if they don't stop. You could have done the same. My next door neighbor is a war veteran. He was medically discharged from the military. He has some head trauma and has a missing leg. He's a wheelchair user and going through physical therapy to learn to walk again. He needs assistance and he needs to modify the house. The main one being a ramp as the house is five steps up. He moved in with his sister who owns the place. I'm a housing contractor and my next door neighbor asked me to build it for like 10K or something. I told her just to pay for the materials and I'd do it for free. I got a permit to build, took a ridiculous amount of time to get it. I also told the HOA about the ramp. They didn't get back to me, despite me calling, emailing, sending letters, and getting to them in person. It's about three weeks, no response. Screw it, I'm building the ramp, and I don't give a damn about their specifications. During this entire time, whenever he had to enter or leave the house, two people would have to carry his wheelchair up or down. It's ridiculous. I start building the ramp and I'm about halfway done. I go home to finish it the next day. The next day, the HOA sends a nasty letter to the house informing them that the ramp doesn't meet the HOA specifications. Something about the aesthetics and a suitable color would. We ignore the letter. A neighbor complains and threatens to bring a lawsuit over it. Are you kidding me? There's an HOA meeting to discuss other stuff, but I've just about lost my patience over all of this. I finish building the ramp, and the HOA is demanding we deconstruct it. I go to the meeting and I explain how the HOA never got back to me, and that it's their fault they don't like the aesthetics. They said that rules are rules and we must follow them. I lost my temper at that point and yelled, Shut your mouth! That man sacrificed his legs overseas for us. You are all disgusting pieces of crap for making his life harder. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. HOA president told me to calm down and I told her to shut her ugly mouth and that I would not be making any of their BS adjustments 
and I will go to court over this. They're violating the Americans with Disabilities Act. We'll have a field day with them in court. So they just shut up after that. But my God, I can't believe there are people like this. Not the idiot. I would consult an attorney about this. Certain things supersede an HOA's authority, even though they frequently think they are the supreme rulers. Also, if you have a TV station in the area and are willing to go on camera, go to them with this. As someone who has worked in the business, there is nothing a journalist loves more than shaming an HOA for making life hard for a disabled veteran. Not the idiot. It seems like the HOA often forgets who they're serving. It's pretty clear they're in the wrong here. Nonetheless, it is still immature to blow up like that. You shouldn't have said anything like that at all. You should have just said, okay, okay, and left. Then you should absolutely have contacted a lawyer that specializes in this. No, I disagree. OP said exactly what needed to be said. What they're wanting is disgusting. To put aesthetics over a disabled person's needs, let alone a veteran. I hope every HOA member on that HOA board steps on multiple Legos every day. OP, you are not the idiot, but you are the hero. This is the problem when you move to an HOA. It's not his house, so they don't really have to accommodate anything. It's his sister's place. Second, I think it's legal for them to allow it only to be done a certain way. The law only states they allow it, but then again, it's not his house. Sticky situation. Don't move to an HOA ever. Their rules are silly for the most part. He is a resident in the home. Just because his name isn't on the lease, that is irrelevant. What if it were her child? They also don't own the home, but would need accommodation. Seriously? Kids, elderly parents, aunts and uncles, your niece and nephew who's going to college, your adult sibling, and kids while they get over a nasty divorce. If the sister owns it, she can decide who is a resident, not the HOA. I have this female friend for a few years. We're close, but not best friends. We occasionally hang out, but she's not the person I call when I go through a hard time. That's pretty much our friendship. Sometimes I get a feeling that she thinks our friendship is deeper than it really is, and it feels one-sided, so I always try to be honest of my wills and intentions with her. I never saw her in a romantic way. I never planned on hooking up with her. I don't even consider her one of my closest friends. A few months ago, I met a girl and we started chatting and enjoying each other's company. We weren't in a relationship, but we were casually dating at first with no commitment. When I mentioned this to my friend, they urged me to do something. Except that girlfriend I mentioned who didn't seem too happy. She pulled me to the side at one point and told me, So to make this clear, I don't care if you get a girlfriend, I'm happy for you. But if we hang out with the rest of the group and they're with their partners, please tell me you won't always bring your girlfriends around. I won't feel comfortable third wheeling for all of you. I said that's not reasonable. And why would I not bring my girlfriend just so she won't feel lonely? Anyway, eventually I got with this girl. I didn't always bring her around my outings with my friends, except when other partners were also present. My friend kept giving me tantrums for prioritizing my girlfriend over her. She also brought up an old joke about her and I getting married in the future and how my girlfriend should get in line. After one of her tantrums yesterday, I told her to suck it up at some point because my girlfriend won't stop coming around when other partners are around too. She calls me the idiot for being a bad friend and not taking her discomfort and feelings into consideration. Not the idiot, but your friend is into you. You should probably stop hanging out with her. I have a feeling she thinks you eventually would give up on dating and just settle for her since she's always around. One of those if we are still single by the time we're 40 deals. Be honest with your girlfriend about this girl so she doesn't try to lie about you to her. And don't hang out with her without other friends around. Whoopsie, friend is jealous, which sucks. But you know, what are you gonna do? Sorry, girlfriend, my friend doesn't wanna be the only solo person. So I'm gonna say no to you and she'll be my company for the evening. There's some deep-rooted jealousy going on there. It honestly sounds like she's obsessed with you. So you should be careful and try to never be alone with her. Also, I would say it's probably best to do a slow fade on this friendship. I am getting very fatal attraction vibes from this. It sounds like she's had plenty of time to shoot her shot with you and come to terms with the fact that you don't have that kind of a relationship. 
I've been in her shoes of longing to have a relationship with a male friend. But at some point, she has got to realize that you do not have that relationship. If you were to actually get engaged with your girlfriend or married, would she still demand priority? My husband, 38, and I, 36 female, have two kids, a son, teen, and a daughter, young teen. I used to be close with my son, but he has been very withdrawn and moody as a teenager. I understand this is normal as children grow up, but I think he may be on the extreme end. In his free time, he stays in his room playing games or chatting with his friends. This is fine if balanced, but it's gotten to the point where we only see him during meals, where he won't talk to us. He gives one word answers and then leaves ASAP. It feels like years since the last time I or anyone else in the family have had a real conversation with him. This has made me a bit sad, especially as he's stopped talking to my parents, his grandparents as well. As a boy, he used to play chess with his grandfather all the time, and they really bonded over it. I know his grandfather has been lonely and nostalgic over it, particularly as his health has gotten worse. I've tried to talk to my son about spending more time with family, even if it's just a little each week, and how appreciative his grandfather would be in particular. Unfortunately, it doesn't work, as he complains that I'm just lecturing or guilting him. So I've been thinking about it for a while, and I wanted to incentivize spending more time with family. So my husband and I instituted a new rule. If my son spent at least 30 minutes a week with a family member, he would get a 30% boost to his allowance money. We emphasized it could be 30 minutes of anything with anyone in the family. He could throw a football around with his dad, go biking with his sister, play cards or chess with his grandparents, etc. Just to be clear, even if he didn't do it, he would still get his regular allowance, just not the extra 30%. To be fair, we also gave the same option to my daughter. This was a lot easier for her because she's more social than him and was already spending more than 30 minutes with family anyway. So she was pretty happy with the new rule. My son, however, was very upset. He complained that this new rule punished him and favored his sister because of their personality differences. He pointed out that she enjoyed socializing and doing family stuff, whereas he didn't, and that it was unfair that she got extra cash for doing things she already liked. He's been even moodier and more withdrawn these last couple of days, and the new rule seems to have the opposite of its intended effect. My husband now thinks we might be the idiots. He says that it's true the new allowance rule is easier on our daughter. My husband also thinks we went about this the wrong way, and by trying to pay our son to spend time with our family would just make it feel like a job and make him hate doing it. I don't know at this point, and I'm at the end of my rope. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. When I was a teen, I spent all my time with friends or in my room. That's not uncommon at all. Don't try to force him to spend time with you and punish him when he doesn't. Make a point of letting him know he's welcome and don't make a big deal of it if he shows up. Nothing makes introverts feel worse than when someone mocks their good behavior. Not the idiot. You aren't asking him to spend hours volunteering at an old folks home with strangers. You're asking him to be a part of the family. That's it for 30 minutes. You aren't saying he has to clean or do chores. Spend 30 minutes with a family member, which would probably do him good. Our own therapist told us to stay active with them, even as teens. Ask them to help with ABC or putting together XYZ. Then thank them and say, man, I needed your help. Thank you. Do you want to get a soda and a burger? No? Okay, thanks. And carry on. Don't allow them to cut themselves out of the family completely. They need you more than ever now. It's a difficult time in their lives. LOL, why the heck isn't this kid doing chores anyway? He's nearly adult. Women aren't going to be around for him for the rest of his life to take care of him. Boys need to learn this stuff early. How much you want to bet his younger sister can take care of herself and do basic domestic work? And it's been instilled in her already. Meanwhile, does the older brother just get to game and socialize with his friends during his free time? Seriously, if he thinks socializing with his family for five minutes a day is the end of the world, even when it's paid for? Jesus Christ, he's going to have a full-on toddler meltdown when he has to learn to do his own dishes.